In 2010, the Sabah Wildlife Department formed a wildlife rescue unit to address the area's key conservation concerns. This is their story. So we've just turned up to Kinneroot, just outside of Kota Kinabalu, with the Wildlife Rescue Unit. And there have been reports of crocodiles in the local water systems. So the plan is to set a trap, leave it overnight, and then come back tomorrow and relocate the crocodile out of harm's way. In Borneo, human development is often along rivers, and Saba is no exception. These rivers, and their many tributaries are natural highways for some fearsome inhabitants. Saltwater crocodiles are the world's largest and most aggressive crocodile species. As humans and their domestic animals have moved further into crocodile territory, conflicts have increased. The WRU are tasked with the capture and relocation of these crocodiles. Specially designed crocodile traps are manufactured in Lokawi. And today one is being deployed along a canal leading to an oil palm plantation. Okay. So Ben, mm -hmm. how does this trap work? Perangkap ini dipasang dengan pelampung kita tengok PVC sebelah menyebelah untuk dia timbul di permukaan air. Jadi kita pasang dia, kita letak di dalam air, timbul, kita tunggu untuk buaya datang untuk makan perangkap anulah umpan ni. Do you feel confident that we'll catch a crocodile? Yes. Ya. Yeah. Saya betul yakin. Habis kami sudah pernah banyak kali pasang perangkap sebegini. And do the crocodiles cause problems with the people here? Biasanya orang-orang uh, yang ada di sini Biasanya akan membuat laporan. Has anyone ever been killed? Selama ini di kawasan KK, Kota Kinabalu, tidak ada kes lagi uh, manusia dibunuh ataupun diserang untuk bu oleh buaya. Tetapi di kawasan lain seperti Kinabatangan, Telupit, Pitas, memang ada serangan-serangan inilah serangan buaya. It's hard to address these issues in remote areas. But the WRU tackle the problem wherever they can. Today the guys are using chicken as bait because crocodiles aren't exactly fussy eaters. As well as eating chicken, they'll also eat primates, they'll eat birds, they'll eat humans, and they'll even eat each other. So now we take the cage to the water, lower it with this delicious snack inside, yeah. and then wait for the croc to come and take the bait. Easy as that. So now the trap has been laid with the bait inside and we're going to leave this overnight when the crocs are at their most active hunting. And then we're going to come back tomorrow, hopefully with a crocodile in the cage, and relocate it somewhere safe. At the WRU's Lokawi base, I caught up with Chief Vet Dr Diana to find out why human-crocodile conflict has seen an alarming rise in recent years. These are different reasons. One is definitely the population of crocs is increasing together with the reduce of the habitat, deforestation or new human settlements. And also we have another factor which is, which is uh, pollution of rivers and big drains. A recent problem is rubbish building up around human developments and crocodiles are attracted to the smell. It's easy for the crocs to spread. So if we manage to catch a croc tomorrow, what's the plan? Uh, so in this case, if we got the croc, we will bring him first to our park, uh, just to keep it for a while. The team then need to find a safe place to release the reptile, away from human developments. But crocs, like pigeons, have an uncanny homing instinct, so the location must be far away. The next morning, we were all on the road, heading back to check on our trap. So we're back at the capture site and have heard reports that the crocodile has been caught. It wasn't quite the monster croc I'd been expecting, but it certainly was big enough and pretty cross. Whoa. 
We've got to be really careful to keep our fingers away from its jaws. Crocodiles have one of the one of the most powerful bites of any animal. You can imagine how that would be if your hand was in those jaws. Oh. Even though it's only a juvenile, it's still quite heavy. A thrashing croc in a steel cage will soon injure itself, so the next step was to immobilise it for the coming journey. But first, I've been invited to take a more intimate look. Now we pull the crocodile out of its cage in order to sex it, so we can tell whether it's a male or female. And that's what these gloves are for. Friendly, friendly. For these guys, it was all routine. Friendly. Pull it out, cover its eyes to keep it calm, and then tape up the jaws. As much to protect the crocodile as it was for us. The croc then had to suffer the indignity of being hogtied. With its jaws secure, and now its front and back legs, the sexing can begin. This is definitely a first for me, sticking my finger up a... <laughs> <laughs> Investigation over, all that remained was to load him up and deliver him to a holding pen at Lokawi Zoo. Male crocodiles are incredibly territorial, so it's not just a case of being able to release them anywhere into the wild. You've got to make sure you do your research first. The Wildlife Rescue Unit will keep him here until they have found a suitable place to release him. Ready? Okay. Yeah. Not long after, the team released the croc into the Kinabatangan River on the other side of Sabah. Here, both crocodile and humans will be safe. <laughs>